In Module 4, Lesson 14, we move along to multiply unit fractions by non-unit fractions. Okay, so here's the first few examples. They have it partially laid out for us. Uh, with the unit form here, we look at uh, blank fourths equals blank fourths. We're going to start, though, with the uh, rectangular area model. And we're going to bracket the top with a 1. We want to model 3 fourths. So we're going to divide it into three, uh, four equal parts with three vertical lines. We're going to shade three out of the four. We're going to label that three fourths. Now we want one third of that. So we're going to use horizontal lines to divide the same rectangle into thirds. Once again, we'll label this thirds, one third. We're going to double shade this portion. So what do we have here? We have one third times three fourths equals three. Three are double shaded out of a total of twelve. So that equals three twelfths. We can simplify that, can't we? We can simplify that to one fourth. So going back to our unit form here, one third of three fourths is one fourth. Example B, again we'll start with our rectangular area model. And we have one half of four fifths. So I'll partition this into five equal parts. We will bracket four fifths. And then we'll shade four out of five of our partitions. Now we want one half of that, so we're going to use one horizontal line. We'll label it one half. We'll shade in one half of the four fifths. So again, let's look at our problem here. We have one half times four fifths. And again, we have four that are shaded in both directions. And that's four out of ten. We can simplify that because both four and ten are divisible by two. That becomes two fifths. So again, we'll take a look uh, at our unit form up here at top. One half of four fifths equals two fifths. Here's a few other examples. We don't have the uniform, but uh, we have, I could say, one half of two halves equals blank halves. Let's work with our model. We're going to partition it to two equal parts because we have half as the denominator, or two. We're going to shade in both because we have two halves. We can see that one and two halves is the same thing. We're now going to take one half of that. I'll try a different color here. There we go. And we're going to shade in half of that. That should be a dotted line horizontally. We will now label one half. So I have one half times two halves. Two halves, not two fourths equals two-fourths, which is the same as one-half. So I have my statement above, one-half of two-halves is one-half. All right, continuing along. Again, I can say two-thirds of one-half equals two-thirds of blank halves. equals, well we'll see what happens here, it's going to be a little different. So I'm going to take my rectangular model, I'm going to shade one half, and label it. 
want two thirds of that. I will now double shade two thirds of the one half and label it with a bracket. Now this doesn't equal any halves here, so that's not going to apply to this problem. So what do we have? I have two thirds times one half equals two six. So we have two out of six shaded. And that can be simplified because both the numerator and the denominator are divisible by two. It becomes one third. Okay, a couple more examples. Again, use the rectangular model. I have three fifths as my second factor, so I'll partition this into five equal parts. I will bracket three of the five parts and shade them. Now I want one half of that. Okay, so let's look at our problem here. We have one half times three fifths, and we have a total of ten equal parts, and three are double shaded with both colors. So we get three tenths. We should start uh, seeing a pattern here with these. Let's uh, do one last example. And we have two thirds of one fourth. Bracket, shade one fourth. Now we have two thirds. Partition it going horizontally into three equal parts and I'll shade two of those three. So what do we have? We have two thirds times one fourth equals two out of twelve, two twelfths, which is the same as one sixth. Let's go on to some word problems. These are interesting. You'll see in a moment when I make my tape diagram. Five eighths of Harrison's music, the songs on Harrison's music player are hip hop. One third of the remaining songs are rhythm and blues. What fraction of all the songs are rhythm and blues? Use a tape diagram to solve. We have his entire collection. We could bracket that and put a one. And since the denominator is 8 on 5 eighths, I'm going to divide my tape diagram into 8 equal parts. And I'm going to bracket down below 5 of those 8. And what do we have remaining? We have 3 eighths. Now, the interesting thing about this is that, well, I, I can do what I have been doing. But you'll notice that one-third of what's remaining is represented by one of these squares here. So we could say that this is R and B. That's R and B. These are the same size. So how big is it? It's one out of the eight. So the answer is one-eighth. Because, like I said, when we have five-eighths, we have three-eighths remaining. One-third of three-eighths equals three twenty-fourths, and that equals one-eighth. So one-eighth of the songs are rhythm and blues. Look for this opportunity in your homework. Sometimes it just works out nicely this way. Three-fifths of the students in the room are girls. One-third of the girls have blonde, blonde hair. One-half of the boys have brown hair. What fraction of all students are girls with blonde hair? Again, we'll get that tape diagram out. We're going to see a pretty convenient way of working this out. 
So we have three fifths, so I'm going to partition this into uh, five equal parts. Bracket that, put a one. Now, one third, or three fifths, are girls. These are the girls, those are the three fifths. And one third of those girls has blonde hair. So again, we can see that this unit here is the same as that unit, and this unit is one of five, so it's uh, one fifth. Let's do this mathematically. So I have one third times three fifths, and we'll make our model. I'll bracket three fifths and shade it. And then we're going to now partition it in two thirds, going horizontally. And we'll shade in one third of that three fifths. So what do we have? Well, I have three out of 15. And that can be simplified because both three and 15 are divisible by three. And yes, indeed, I get the one-fifth. So now we need to go uh, what fraction of the students are boys with uh, without brown hair. All right, well, we can, I'm just going to recreate the previous tape diagram. All right, these are the girls. So these are the boys. It says one half of the boys have brown hair. So this is the boys with brown. And these are the boys not brown. Again, we can look at the tape diagram. And we're looking for the not brown uh, guys. And we can see that it's one of these sections here. And of course, this is the same as this. And each one of these is equal to 1 fifth. Let's do it mathematically. So I have 1 half. How many are boys? Well, it's 2 fifths. Make our tape diagram. And partition it into 5 equal parts. This time bracketing 2. And shading. Now we have one half, so we're going to partition it horizontally into halves. And what do we have? We have two shaded out of a total of ten. Both the numerator and the denominator are divisible by two. So the answer is, once again, one-fifth. You're going to see a lot of this in your homework as well. Okay, here's one. It's going to be similar to the ice cream one that you see in your homework. And again, well, the tape diagram is going to make these answers kind of obvious, but we'll do it with the tape diagram and without. So we have Sam and Cody and Sam mowed the lawn on Saturday. Dad told Cody to mow one-fourth of the lawn. He told Sam to mow one-third of the remainder of the yard. Dad paid each of the boys an equal amount. Sam said, Dad, that's not fair. I had to mow one-third, and Cody only mowed one-fourth. Explain to Sam the error in his thinking. Draw a picture to uh, support your reasoning. So we'll represent the yard as one big unit. And Dad told Cody to mow one-fourth. Okay, so this is Cody's mode, right? The rest is remaining. And Sam had to mow one-third of the remaining. Well, how much did Sam mow? Well, if we took one third of what remained, we had one third, one fourth mowed, and 
three-fourths not mowed. We took one-third of that. Well, Sam and Cody mowed the same amount. Let's work the math, though. So I have one-third times three-fourths. So how much did he actually mow? Again, using our rectangular model. Partition that into four equal parts. Because that's three-fourths. That represents what was remaining. This represents what Cody mowed. So now we'll take that and divide it into three equal parts. We'll shade in one-third of the three-fourths. If we look, we see that we have three sections shaded with both colors. We have twelve sections in all. We can simplify three twelfths to one-fourth because both three and twelve are divisible by three. and We get one-fourth. So we can see through diagrams and we can see through mathematics that Sam and Cody mowed exactly the same amount of lawn. 